And what's going on, wrestling fans? It is I, Steve Fall. Welcome to 10 Count Media on today's edition. We're traveling back to 2008 to talk about the Great American Bash. I got Danielle with me. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I am doing great. And so far on our journey of going back in time and reliving childhood memories and things like that, 2008, I was not a child. I was just graduating uh, college. And at the time, I was thinking, like, man, wrestling is so good. But yet, we're heading into this pay per view. And two days after this pay-per-view, the Great American Bash, the WWE goes PG. And we've been in the PG era for as long as I can remember, since 2008, two days after this. Are you shocked that the Attitude Era leaned us into going PG pretty much just for sponsorships? Yeah, I mean, you got to remember, when Attitude Era was going on, times were different. Like, things were just wild. I mean, we thought the world was going to end in 1999. So, like... True. <laughs> so times were so different and then you know as people get older they start realizing mm, you know maybe we shouldn't be saying this on tv maybe we shouldn't uh be treating women a certain way like we we gotta elevate with with the times so and they had to bring in new fans like because as you said we were getting older so what's another way to bring in new fans is just you got to target the kids so you have to change it up and I mean, do I wish they're still in PG? No, I think you can bump it up to like TV 14, but like, you know, they had to adapt to times. So I can see why. Yeah, I can tell The Rock, though, heading into WrestleMania 40, did not get the memo that in 2008, two days after the Great American Bash, mm -hmm. they went PG because um, a lot of F-bombs heading into WrestleMania 40, obviously, mm -hmm. different times, different people can say whatever mm -hmm. they want. But again, this pay-per-view, before it, there is a draft, a WWE draft. And this is the night that Jim Ross and Michael Cole swap shows. Jim Ross from Raw went to SmackDown. Michael Cole from SmackDown went to Raw. And apparently JR did not know anything about this. So when they announced it, they got an organic reaction. A sad, pissed off JR. Now, let's break this down for a second. Because I've heard stories where JR would be backstage being like, well, you can't. You can't. Oh, well, he can't trade me. I'm I'm the voice of Monday Night Raw, and and he was the voice of Raw with Jerry the King Lawler. But now he's on SmackDown and he's got a very very poor attitude about this. And I would too, because listen, we've seen Vince prank people live on TV. Now he's doing it to the head of the commentary team, Jr. Do you think that was a good look? Like, oh, we're gonna get his organic look, so we won't tell him. But. Wouldn't it be a better idea to have like JR being happy going to SmackDown and not like, damn it, I don't want to be here? I mean, I get the element of surprise. You want a genuine reaction from the commentators or the superstars when they're changing um, team, changing brands. But you also, on the other aspect, you have to be a good sport about it. Like, what are you teaching people by throwing a tantrum because you're no longer the face of Raw? Well, shouldn't you look at it as now you can elevate SmackDown? Like, you should. I don't think it's appropriate to, like, get upset. You got to you gotta adapt to change. You have to be open to change. So it wasn't good on JR. Yeah, I think, though, they should have told him because mm -hmm. then he could have had an attitude like, all right, JR, we want, you're going to SmackDown. Everyone loves you, so we want your JR audience to follow you to, to SmackDown. And mm -hmm. he could have pretended to be upset. And that's what I never understood about wrestling, where it's like, let's trick the boys or let's get a real reaction. You think people who are pretending to be drunk in a movie are actually drunk? Like, no, they're pretending to be drunk. Why can't we have wrestlers pretend to be upset or pretend to be sad? We have those elements and matches. But why do you think it always happens with like certain things like this with the draft, like or the Royal Rumble? Like we can't tell anybody when they're coming out because they might get online. I get that part. But. JR went on his blog that night and wrote a big giant article about how he was pissed off and upset about this. And he was part of the team of the backstage creative team putting together wrestlers. And imagine if this happened to a wrestler, I bet JR would be like, well, come on, be a team player. Well, JR, yeah. are you being a team player right here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, could Vince have told him? Sure. But I'm sure if Vince, likes the element of surprise. He likes keeping everyone on their toes. So JR, could JR react differently? Yeah, he could have been pissed off in the moment, but like, hey, I guess I'm going to SmackDown. I guess that's how I would handle it. Like, oh, well, yeah. new brand.
and like there's probably a routine too. He's been with Jerry the King mm-hmm. Lawler for mm-hmm. at that point, I would say since 90, like five, 96 ish. Mm-hmm. And so they've been a team for more than a decade. And mm-hmm. now they're being split up. I, I get why JR is pissed. I do. Mm-hmm. But maybe tell him mm-hmm. next time. <laughs> maybe t- okay. because even Triple H in this draft, who mm-hmm. at this time, I despised Triple H in 2008. I thought he was just holding everybody down from Rob Van Dam to Chris Jericho to Booker T to Kane. Anyone who was in the world title hunt, Triple H, I felt like always cut their legs out. That's just me observing from a distance. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's true or not, but even Pat mm-hmm. Patterson put out reports saying that, you know, when Triple H is on a house show, revenue's down. When he's not on the house show, revenue's yeah. up. Mm, you know, facts are facts, money is money, yet he runs it. So, uh, sir. I enjoyed your 2008 run, but yet he's drafted to SmackDown. Mm-hmm. And that made me so happy because now it allowed for me as a fan to see wrestlers on raw, find new spots, new places to go. Do you always feel like there's an opportunity? Like when a wrestler gets hurt or goes to another show that mm-hmm. opens the door for more mm-hmm. spots. And I think that allowed CM Punk probably to flourish a little bit on raw as well. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. I mean, obviously whenever a wrestler, if- you know, a big wrestler gets injured. Like this year, we had Rhea, Seth all gone. It sucks. But then you have to look on the bright side. It gives, it elevates other, it makes other people step in. Like we got Liv Morgan back in the picture. And yeah. so we got, you know, Drew now the face, like while Seth was out and Punk is still injured. So it gives others a chance to shine. It sucks. No one wants to get injured. Um, but for the others, I I look at it like, well, hey, I have an idea. Let me let me try to replace this person for the time being. So oh. there's pros and cons. Like, yeah, you lose. Him. I was happy. I was just so happy he was off mm-hmm. raw. I was so happy. It, mm-hmm. We got the Jeff Hardy Triple H rivalry on SmackDown and stuff like that. But I was just so damn happy that mm-hmm. Triple H moved from Raw to SmackDown. But also. CM Punk cashed in his Money in the Bank briefcase on Edge on an episode of Raw. Batista destroyed Edge, and then CM Punk came out, cashed in, and won. And as a CM Punk fan at the time then and the time now, I was so happy. But yet, I guess the idea is, well, he looks like a weak champion. Because before that, we've only had a few cash-ins, and it was always like a heel, or it was someone saying, I'm going to cash in on you, Rob Van Dam versus John Cena. One Night Stand 2006. He like warned him, hey, we're going to have a match, so get prepared. This was a good guy coming out and cashing in, and I think it backfired because CM Punk was not an established main event wrestler yet, so now he's thrusted in with the Batistas and the John Cena's and Triple H's and Edge and Orton's. D- at the time, I loved CM Punk, and I was like, finally, they're going to make him a, stup- a superstar. I don't feel like any of the moves – that led us to Great American Bash, even what happened at Great American Bash made CM Punk look good as a champion at all. What were your thoughts on the CM Punk run? Um, straight edge, CM Punk was not, you know, not what he is now. Like, once he went rogue and started doing uh, pipe bombs and all that stuff, that's when we got the CM Punk that we all come to love. But I didn't really care for the straight edge uh, punk. I'm like, ah. Long hair, yeah, punk good guy or a bad guy. Yeah, he he was a good guy here, and he had his long hair, and he was getting mm-hmm. pretty cashed in, and it was just I don't know. It was it was yeah. weird weird times for CM Punk fans because we were all so happy to see him now rubbing mm-hmm. shoulders with main event wrestlers, but yet he wasn't being treated like a main event wrestler. If John Cena was world champion, he'd be the main event. Mm-hmm. CM Punk is the world champion. He is, I think, like the fourth match, mm-hmm. maybe fifth out of like an eight card. So it's like. It, it, for me, it didn't look good on CM Punk, but mm-hmm. the cash in was the first time a baby face did it out of the blue versus now we're all just happy. Like, oh, my God, it's a cash in. Mm-hmm. Then it was he's cashing in. But is he a weak champion? Like that mm-hmm. was the that was the argument of who cares if it's the bad guy, a bad guy supposed to cheat and win a good guy mm-hmm. used the briefcase, but he did it in a way where it, it was a heelish heelish ways there but you know i i enjoyed that also the last thing before we get to the actual pay-per-view uh edge and vicky guerrero are supposed to get married on smackdown but triple h reveals that edge was doing stuff with the wedding planner who was alicia fox but she wasn't alicia fox at the time i think it was victoria crawford is what they were calling her on television i love me a good old wrestling wedding always entertaining 
always a good time. They never seem to end the right way, though. But this pay-per-view, um, outstanding. Great American Bash 2008. I think some of the matches are so good. But the best one to me that even ends in like a no contest, Shawn Michaels versus Chris Jericho. Jer- mm-hmm. This match was so brutal and so bloody. This is the match and this is the pay-per-view where after this, blood is banned from the WWE. It is fine. If you get, if you bleed on television on purpose, you get fined. Batista in 2009 eats $100,000 because him and Jericho were bleeding in a steel cage match on Raw. But here, this is the beginning. This is the, the thought. Now, what do you think about bleeding? Because I think it adds such a visual to a wrestling match. Um, It all depends what kind of matches. If you're just bleeding just to bleed, Oh my god, this is like you don't really need it. But if it gives it like I don't know, I can't I don't like the sight of blood. Blood doesn't really like do it for me. Like, uh no, I, no, I don't like it. Uh it just seems very messy and very unsanitized. I don't know. I don't I mean unless it's like an indie death match. I'm like, yeah, light bulb, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But um I don't ever find it necessary. Like, I I mean, I understand, like, a chair shot to the head. Yeah, you're going to bleed. Um, but if you're just doing it just to add theatrics to it, I don't like it. It's no? Nix it, yeah. I love me some blood. The, I, 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 for a while, though, it was, like, a little bit here and there, a little scarce. And then it yeah. was every match, someone's bleeding. It's like, no, save it. Okay. But pay-per-views, it would turn into, like, all right, who's the main event? Triple H? Triple H loved to bleed. for so mm-hmm. You know, he loved doing that but this match though do you think the blood was so excessive in the jericho Shawn michaels match that this required vince and they need to look at it and go okay no more blood like was it that excessive i don't uh, i don't think it was that excessive but it might have been to the sponsors they're like ah no 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 no. you, you yeah. gotta reel it in <laughs> you gotta i mean remember we had the brood jumping dropping gallons of blood on people so like this is like yeah blood sponsors are probably like no <laughs> we got kids out here let's let's reel it in <laughs> and and if and if it's true that this is the match that really canceled blood and then two days later we go to pg well obviously you can't have blood mm-hmm. and go pg at the same mm-hmm. time like it doesn't add up you're gonna sponsorship mm-hmm. is really gonna be crushed and mm-hmm. ruined so i don't think the blow is that excessive either here but um mm-hmm. In 2008, I don't think the Shawn Michaels, Trish Jericho storyline in today's world, go back 10 years, people still talked about it. The storyline between Jericho and Shawn Michaels is top 10 greatest WWE rivalries of all time. We have Austin and Rock, you know, you have Hogan and Macho Man, you have uh, Roman Reigns and the Bloodline and Cody Rhodes and The Rock and all that. Shawn Michaels and Jericho. I don't think it's talked about anymore. For a long time, it did. For a long time, it did. But the, the culmination of all this is this started at WrestleMania 24. Shawn Michaels retired Ric Flair. Mm-hmm. And then a month later, Batista is upset with Shawn Michaels because he retired Ric Flair. So they have a match. Jericho is the referee. And Shawn Michaels pretends to be hurt, which stalls the match for a second, which allows Shawn Michaels to pick up the win. Now, Jericho, who's the good guy, is not set to question Shawn Michaels' morality, being like, you lied. Mm-hmm. Are you a good guy? Are you supposed to be this nice Christian guy? And mm-hmm. pretty much Shawn Michaels retiring Ric Flair and lying all the time made Chris Jericho go crazy, which mm-hmm. set up this whole storyline, which set up all of this. And um, I, I it just leads to Shawn Michaels' wife getting punched in the face. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that is where we're at here. What do you think about this rivalry? Do you consider it uh, one of your top tier rivalries of all time, or you just think it's a good match, good good stories? So, um, at this time, I wasn't in wrestling, so like I bypassed all of this stuff. Yeah, I was like, I wasn't in the era of like John Cena, Batista, um, Rey Mysterio. I I was gone from wrestling. So, and honestly, Chris Jericho wasn't really my favorite growing up. So, like, eh, like. I'm not like he was he had like those funny one liners and he was good to like he's good on promos, but he wasn't like my favorite wrestler mm. like, growing up. Like uh like I enjoyed his storyline with China, um, but oh, yeah. he wasn't he wasn't really for it, like it for me. He's still not it for me today. <laughs> mm. 
he's still young and up and coming wrestler in AEW. So like <laughs> that he is. That that he is. Yeah, the 2008 is the beginning of Jericho using big words in his promos, wearing suits. And then that creates a whole list. Suddenly everybody wants to use big words. Suddenly everybody wants to wear suits to the ring. And I know Ric Flair was wearing suits and Triple H was wearing suits. But mm-hmm. like after Jericho did it, everyone did it. Cody Rhodes had to do it. Dolph Ziggler mm-hmm. had to do it. Miz had to do it. So like Jer- Jericho in 2008, I think mm-hmm. revolutionized wrestling for a long time. Shawn Michaels and him go on to have incredible matches and stories in 2008 but here their match actually gets stopped because mm-hmm. jericho will not stop attacking hbk's eyeball mm-hmm. which again sets up a storyline where Shawn michaels has to retire because his eye has been injured by jericho mm-hmm. and again this rivalry gets so good that eventually jericho becomes world champion mm-hmm. because they have to keep leveling up Shawn michaels and chris jericho so two thumbs mm-hmm. up to this match Two thumbs up to the storyline, though. Um, I just, I wonder, in the age of buying pay per views in two thousand eight, would you be upset if you paid fifty, sixty dollars to watch this and you get a non finish? No, not at all. And that, that just means it's just a continuation, like a, a continuation of the story. You're just figuring, well, what what are they going to do now? Like, what's next? What's what's how do we end this story? So, no, I don't get upset with like double qualifications i just know i always know like shenanigans and it's just going to continue the story so we just have to figure out what's the next chapter <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah this was the longest match on the card too 18 minutes yeah. and 18 seconds mm-hmm. so if you if you do watch one match i would say go back and watch this one mm-hmm. though the the first match of the night isn't even on the actual pay-per-view and it's so sad to see what happened to these wrestlers ken mr kennedy Versus Umaga. Umaga beats Mr. Kennedy. And at one point, you know, you said you were out of wrestling for a little while, but at one point, Umaga and Mr. Kennedy were like the next mm-hmm. tier. They were gonna ro- they were gonna be the new guys with MVP and Carlito and Chris mm-hmm. Masters. They, every couple of years, you suddenly got new um superstars to compete with mm-hmm. your Shawn Michaels and your Triple H's and things like that. That's why I was so happy to see CM Punk as champion. But Mr. Kennedy and Umaga, I don't know what happened. Like, I don't know how the rails fell off. I interviewed Mr. Kennedy three times now, and we've pretty much talked about everything in his wrestling career. And he uh, he attributes accidentally injuring John Cena and accidentally in a match with Randy Orton hurting him, which led to wrestling politics, which mm-hmm. eventually leads him to being on the kickoff show instead of on the pay-per-views. Mm-hmm. It's it's sad. I thought Kennedy had was amazing on the mic. Umaga, I had a good run too. Like these not people who had bad runs, but mm-hmm. yeah, I thought they'd be world champion, not right. You know the kickoff show. You know. That's the thing with Vince McMahon's time. Like, it, it, unfortunately, these wrestlers became like toys to him. For one moment, they would be really super hot, and then the next moment, we're like, well, what happened? Like, he he changes a lot. So. It, it just sucks that the same players kept getting the main spotlight and the new up and comers did it. But, you know, that was just Vince. He had his favorites and he knew who his favorites were. So that's what he elevated. It's, it, it is interesting to see in today's world in 2024, yeah. as we record this, that wrestlers and storylines don't just disappear because someone had a random thought while driving to work that they should just right. drop this whole storyline or drop this whole push. Mm-hmm. Now in today's world, with TKO involved, it feels like, okay, the storyline isn't working, but we are going to finish it. Mm-hmm. We're going, even if no one likes this mm-hmm. or is not enjoying it, we're still going to finish this storyline <laughs> versus, okay, um, CM Punk versus Batista is up next. Well, uh, I don't really feel like CM Punk's doing well. Uh, let's just take the world title off in, in, in a month. Mm-hmm. But, but, but why? What's the, yeah. Can we keep on trying? Nah. You know, I had a taco today, and that taco wouldn't feel well in my stomach, and now I don't feel like pushing CM Punk. I mean, That's- yeah, that was Vince's time. Like, even right before, two seconds before, or even during the match, things were changed. I mean, who could forget Money in the Bank where Mustafa Ali was supposed to win, and unbeknownst to him, Brock Lesnar comes out and wins it. Like, we are all like, what the hell is going on? Like, things like that, I'm just, I'm glad, like, we are in new times and like we get to finish out storylines, even if we hate it and we're like, wrap it up already. They're wrapping it up. <laughs> I, I agree. I agree. Like <laughs> it felt like decisions on a whim 
mm-hmm. where if you're watching on any television show, not wrestling, mm-hmm. any show that it's mm-hmm. cinematic or whatever, there is, mm-hmm. you know, hey, the love story or this is the bad mm-hmm. guy and the good guy's trying to get around him and, and find mm-hmm. the way, or find the bomb or stop this or stop that. Mm-hmm. They wouldn't just abruptly be like, okay, um, I don't like this. Uh, you, mm-hmm. you were main character. And now you're not. You're going to go yeah. be like, you're dead. Yeah. What, what? What? You can't do that. Like it, it makes television unwatchable. And you know, like Kevin Owens. I, I don't know. This has nothing to do with 2008 Great Match, but like Kevin Owens winning the Universal Championship. I was like, yay! And then they just were like, eh, nothing for you. We just wanted. To, we, we, he wanted to do this today, and that's what would happen. Like, yeah. Right Super duper. Um, at least there is some consistency here. So let's go jump to that. Heavyweight mm-hmm. Championship match. It's CM Punk versus Batista, and it double disqualification when Kane comes out. Mm-hmm. As I brought up earlier, would you be upset? Because now you have two, not mm-hmm. one, but two non finishes in your huge matches. Kane, doubles qualification here, HBK, Jericho, uh, technically a knockout, I guess. Yeah, Jericho, technically a knockout. Yeah. Shawn Michaels. So two, now this has happened. Two non finishes. Would you be upset still? $50 down the drain. Yeah, now I'd be upset because I'm like, okay, one is okay, like, all right, I get it. But now two, you're like, what are we doing here? Did you not know how to finish this? Like, uh, what's going on here? I, but then it becomes excessive. One's okay, two's two's a lot. <laughs> two's a lot. Wrap it up. Yeah. And especially here too, because you just had CM Punk cash in and win, mm-hmm. and so we're already kind of questioning his his championship run. And now he fights Batista. So you're like, oh, he's going to get a big one over Batista. They're going to establish him. Cool, man. No. They clearly didn't want Batista to lose. They didn't want CM Punk to lose. So they were like, ah, we'll just have Kane come down and destroy him. And then we'll set up yeah. more matches for another pay-per-view. Yeah. And the thing is, like, I feel bad for CM Punk at that time. Because after hearing his stories, like, they really didn't, well, you know, Vince did not really believe in CM Punk. Others believed in CM Punk, which is why CM Punk got there because people would vouch for CM Punk. Vince did not see what we saw in CM Punk. So, you know, it just sucks because even though he's not what, you know, a John Cena body type or a Batista body type, he's an excellent wrestler and he's amazing on the mic. So why not just utilize that? It it sucks. I'm glad it worked out for him, <laughs> but oh, it left us. It left a set, uh, sour taste in his mouth for a long time, and it's it's so great to see CM Punk now. And he's I've never seen CM Punk this happy ever. So it's just good to see that he has finally like got the respect that he feels like he deserves, and you know he's killing it. He's he's got a big match Saturday. <laughs> Yeah, he is, he's doing pretty well for himself. Yeah, he did a recent interview in 2024 as we record mm-hmm. this saying like he would probably would never have come back if Vince McMahon was still in charge. Right. Because the relationship he even had then and the infrastructure then was, mm-hmm. you know, a boys will be boys club. Men, you, you, if you break your arm, you get up and you, you know, wipe that off and get back in the ring. I feel mm-hmm. like today's world has finally realized these are humans. They have athletes. They have families. I've interviewed countless countless wrestlers from the 80s and early 90s who said they never saw their family they got divorced while on the road because they were making a living never saw their kids couldn't go home for christmas because vince was like we gotta do a double at this event and we gotta do this i feel like today's world is like you have a birthday party they will let you have that day off for your son or daughter's birthday party versus before it's like stop being a baby get out there and wrestle yeah i mean credit to triple h he's changed that whole he's built he's trying to rebuild the bridges that on this again burns i mean we had jesse ventura on monday night raw like, I know, right? so and we have cm punk back into wwe like these are things that we would never think would happen if vince was still in charge so credit yeah. to triple h for you know building those bridges back up yeah i i i 100 agree in that this mm-hmm. yeah and cm punk and batista was an okay match obviously it leads to more storylines and mm-hmm. more everything but um mm-hmm. We had a New York City parking lot brawl. Half of this was taped the night before, and the other mm-hmm. half is in front of the live crowd. This storyline is hilarious because it also, if you've seen this picture on Twitter or online somewhere, it says JBL is poopy. Mm-hmm. JBL is poopy. Mm-hmm. He John Cena destroyed JBL's limo, and he couldn't write JBL is shitty mm-hmm. couldn't write you know is shit he couldn't write anything like that but he wrote jbl is poopy poopy, poopy. Mm-hmm. 
And uh, that's where we were in, in 2008. And we weren't even PG yet. Two days later, we go PG. So it's just funny to think that, like, what should we write on his limo? Like, he's an ass or or mm-hmm. a jerk? JBL's a jerk? Mm-hmm. Oh, poopy. Yeah. yeah. But even it doesn't matter what age you are, even if you're like four, I guess if you're four, actually, poopy's pretty funny. But if you're watching it and you're an adult watching it, like, poopy? Come up with, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> JBL did pick up the win on John Cena here, which le- leads us to SummerSlam 08, where JBL fights CM Punk. So they're at least establishing that JBL picked up a win against John Cena. And it's mm-hmm. not really a win because he kind of just like hums him off the edge of the, the, the ramp. And John Cena lands on a car window. He busts mm-hmm. through the window and JBL pins him on the car. Mm-hmm. Very strange. Very strange. Yeah. You can win, but you can't beat me in the ring. You beat me on top of a car. It, yeah, I do enjoy the storyline because besides JBL's poopy, there's a moment where backstage before this, like two weeks before, JBL was fighting with John Cena backstage, and that's why it's a parking lot brawl. But yet he supposedly ran over John Cena with his limo, crushed his face. You never see the car hit John Cena, but John Cena's laying here. Here's the car. You see this part. But then the camera doesn't show John Cena being hit by the car. It doesn't show John Cena after the hit being hit by a car. It just shows JBL being like, oh, my God, what have I done? What have I done? Because in reality, you'd be murdered or dead or out for months, right? Nope. John Cena coming back one week later, not a scratch on him, no cast, not even a Band-Aid. Just a simple, hey, everybody, it's me. I'm John Cena, and I'm back. So did he get hit by that car? And if he didn't, what was JBL all shocked about seeing I don't like the whole hitting people with cars. Like it, it never works out well. You can always see like when you do see the wrestlers, they're either laughing because they don't know how to, re- you know, respond. I forget who got hit with a car. I think it was um, during the feud with the bloodline, Jay Uso got hit with a car and you could see him in the car just cracking up. Like I, I don't, those, anytime you involve a car, like it's so dumb. Like what the incident with John, uh, Steve Austin, that worked out. He needs to be written out because he was injured. Yeah. That worked out. Yeah. But with the whole thing of Vince McMahon falling off a car, he's still alive. How is that possible? Like it's, it blew up. It, yeah, it blew up. Yeah, sorry, it blew up. And he's he, he's fine. Like it, it's hit or miss. <laughs> and this was a miss. <laughs> they did that with uh, Shane and Kane in the storyline once. They did that with Braun Strowman and Roman Reigns. Like mm-hmm. someone always is in a car and gets destroyed. But sometimes mm-hmm. if you're like supernatural and you come back, well, it's because that's just badass and cool. But if you yeah. don't show up with like a neck brace on after being hit by a car and JBL is shocked mm-hmm. at what he did to you, mm-hmm. how does that make sense? Yeah. How does that, if like if you ran over the Undertaker, sure, you know, cool, mm-hmm. man. Like in this storyline, in this matchup, John Cena's in a car and JBL sets it on fire. Mm-hmm. He sets it on fire. <laughs> like, how? And John Cena just gets out on fire, guys. No burns. I wonder. No burns. I've always wondered, like, behind the scenes, how does this work? Where do they get these cars from? Like, do you, like, do you call the dealership and be like, hey, I need a junk car because we're going to set it on fire. How does this work? I want to know. <laughs> Where do you find these cars from? How expensive, too. Yeah. This- <laughs> like, okay, well, we're going to have cars. We're going to destroy them. But we're also yeah. going to set one on fire. Who? And Damn. do you need to buy two? Because... Like, how do you rehearse that? Like, I, I, I have questions. I want to know. <laughs> well, that's why half of this is taped the night before in the arena. So that's why, like, the car being started on fire is the night before they taped it. So, if you know, you, you can do a couple, a couple takes to figure this out. If you're doing a live TV, I've seen so many matches where someone tries to use a lighter for, like, mm-hmm. a, fl- a flaming, like, ball or something. And they're mm-hmm. like, come on. Yeah. Come on. It's live on TV. If you fuck up, you fuck up. Yeah. Like, Mm, I don't know how you're breaking. Like, the announcement table is never breaking. You're like, oh, uh, well, what do I do now? <laughs> do I try again? Like, what, what's going on? I do like the crowd, and they're like, one more time, one yeah. more time. And they're like, ah, we can't, we're not supposed to do it one more time. We're supposed to do yeah. it once, you and I'm supposed to pose. Yeah, you, yeah but, you know, could you fix it? Maybe, mm. you know, couldn't you do that? 
So, yeah, this match is crazy. It reminded me of, like, the Boiler Room Brawl. I know you, you're up and down on what years you've watched, but yet mm -hmm. they taped the Boiler Room Brawl between Taker and Mankind in 1996, mm -hmm. SummerSlam. They taped half of it the night before in the Boiler Room, and the other half, once they, like, exit the Boiler Room, is where the match actually starts in front of the live audience. Mm -hmm. JBL and Cena, same thing. But yet again... I, I feel like I keep harping on this, but wouldn't you be a little upset if you bought, say you bought tickets for this? Seeing it on TV is one thing because you get to enjoy the actual match backstage, but you bought tickets for this and half of John Cena's match isn't in front of you. You're you're like watching the screen like, oh, okay. I always hate when they like fight backstage or fight in the crowd because now I'm like, my neck is cramping because I'm like trying to, hopefully the monitor, the Titan Trons are working that I can actually see the match. And I'm like, What's going on here? I, I hate when they go into the crowds or go backstage. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Yeah. And yeah, I, I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> I hate that. And when I sit on the floor, I don't like uh, rest holds because I can't, if you're, if you're not standing up and you're sitting down with a headlock or an ankle lock, you are laying down. So mm -hmm. I, I have to look through people's heads and the cracks mm -hmm. in the crowd to see your headlock. That's one of my mm -hmm. pet peeves as well. Um, mm -hmm. I agree. The looking up, like, huh? Oh, and you're hoping the Titan Tron works because sometimes they don't work. And I'm like, well, what do I know what's going on? I don't know what's going on. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. People, when everyone boos at once, boo! Mm -hmm. WrestleMania 40 had this these lights and um, mm -hmm. people were booing the lights. Like, shut the mm -hmm. lights up. Shut the lights up. They were blind in the audience. And then they shut them off. Everyone was like, yeah. I mean, put them back it, it reminds me of LA Knight and Rest in Peace, Way Bright. Um, Wayne Wright's um, match. Oh, the Mountain um, Dew match at Royal Rumble? Yes, where we couldn't see anything. I'm like, what is the point of this? <laughs> like, oh. It was to promote Mountain Dew, and, and it glows in the dark, apparently. Yeah. yeah Rest in peace. So. That was yeah. my last match seeing him. Oh. Yeah, that was... Um, recently, I was going through some old footage of mine I have, mm -hmm. and I was at the Royal Rumble press conference mm -hmm. that day. That's the last time that Bray Wyatt like did like media. So someone asked him about what did the Undertaker whisper to you, mm -hmm. and uh, he was pretty much saying like I was never, I never wanted to be the next Undertaker. I wanted to be the first Bray Wyatt, mm -hmm. and I think that's one hundred percent true. But to me, Bray Wyatt was my Undertaker. Like I, I grew up with Undertaker, but I believed and felt that Bray Wyatt was. Mm -hmm. He could have been the new. You know, face of fear and the yeah. Lord of darkness, but they never pull the trigger on that either. Right person, right character, wrong person to execute it. Vince McMahon. If had it been Triple H, would have been the right person to execute because look what they're doing with the white six. Beautiful. Chef's kiss. No notes. Um, but Vince didn't know what to do. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Speaking of Triple H, yeah, he defeated Edge in the main event for the mm -hmm. WWE Championship. This is the only time that mm -hmm. Edge and Triple H had a one on one match. On a pay per view, I'm shocked mm -hmm. to find that out because of all the combos of si we've seen Cena and Batista, Cena mm -hmm. and Orton, Triple H and Shawn Michaels. Like we have seen the same combos a thousand times, but Edge and Triple H. Why do you think they didn't wrestle that much on pay per view? I don't know. I, I mean, and Edge was like hot at that time, so I don't. I, I'm not sure why. Maybe backstage politics. Who knows? But. It's one of those things, like the same thing with, um, you know, Taker and Rock. How come they never met at a WrestleMania? Mm -hmm. This this past WrestleMania was the first time we ever got a Rock in uh, Undertaker. At WrestleMania. Yeah, at WrestleMania, yeah. So it's just pretty, mm, I'm saying pay per view. I think they were in maybe six pack challenges, maybe or yeah, or they were mm -hmm. definitely the same teams before mm -hmm. three on threes. But yeah, yeah, I don't think off the top of my head, Undertaker and Rock. Unless it's like a no, because that was fully loaded. So yeah, no, yeah, this is that would it's be true too. Yeah. It's so many players that it's hard to hit every combination, unfortunately. <laughs> well, I also think that Triple H was, um, mm -hmm. as I brought up earlier, had a stranglehold on Raw. So mm -hmm. when Edge finally left Raw to go to SmackDown, Edge got like his own show. Mm -hmm. He was well protected on that show because he was the main heel and he had um, Vicky Guerrero and Chavo mm -hmm. and the Major Brothers who ended up being. Mm -hmm. Kurt Hawkins and Zack Ryder and uh, mm -hmm. Bam Neely. So many random people on. Uh, oh, I didn't recognize Zack Ryder. I didn't recognize Zack uh, Ryder. 
I was like, who is this guy? Because he had long hair. I was like, who is this? And I was like, oh, man. Yeah, he was an he was an edge head. I, I, again, I, I, typical Triple H edge match. I thought it was good, good main event. Yeah. Good way to send the home the crowd home happy. Finally, after having uh, a, a few random matches that just ended strangely. Um, yeah. So I, again, I, I thought it, I thought it was good. Um, the rest of the card though, wishy washy all over the place. This is their tag team division, mm-hmm. by the way, for the WWE tag team titles. You have. Kurt Hawkins and Zack Ryder, who at the time, the, the major brothers were their name at one point. Now they're with Edge, so they win the tag team titles here. The champions mm-hmm. were John Morris and The Miz. Mm-hmm. Jesse and Festus. Festus is one half of the Good Brothers, the Doc Gallows. And Finley and Hornswoggle. Repeat that again. Hornswoggle. That was him? Festus was? That yeah. doesn't look like him. That's the whole point. He doesn't look like him. That's cool. Google him. That's Google him. wild. I just blew your mind. Yeah, I his like, figure I'm like who is this guy? Oh my yes. god, it is him. <laughs> Festus has he, he was a little bit more chunkier. <laughs> he was a little oh, bigger. I thought he'd be a little. Well, I thought you'd describe him as a little slower because his character no. was a simpleton, oh. and if yeah. you rang the bell he would turn into a monster. That was his whole gimmick. But if you ran the bell again, he would go back into being a simpleton. So weird times because eventually Ms. and Morrison and storyline would just be like, grab the bell, they just ring it. And then he would yeah. go back to doing this. And then he wouldn't wrestle. Then his technical yeah. partner gets ass kicked. It was it was good and it was terrible. It was good. I, I, was I enjoy the Miz wearing suits now. The, the Miz, I don't know what he was wearing. John Morrison, it fits him. He's that rocker. Uh, the Miz belongs in suits. That is one character that belongs in a nice suit. <laughs> like his fedora? You don't like Miz and his fedora? No, I was like, what is this fedora? Like, I don't know what's going on. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. He he was deep into fedoras here. But, yeah, Hawkins mm-hmm. and Zack Ryder pick up the win here mm-hmm. to, again, add more heat, more fire, give them a little more spotlight to be on the side of Edge because if Edge does eventually win the, mm-hmm. the championship and – has a, a lengthy, lengthy run with uh, La Familia. Shelton Benjamin wins the United States Championship as well against Matt Hardy. Mm-hmm. Shelton Benjamin is someone I've always been like scratched my head on. Like, not good at promos, but I loved him when he had his mama with him. If you remember that, he had mm-hmm. a woman pretending to be his mom, and mm-hmm. it was very entertaining. Mm-hmm. And then they just dropped it. And I don't know why they dropped it, no idea, but Shelton picks up the win against Matt Hardy. And at this time, same thing, same thing. Matt Hardy, I don't know. The WWE really never cared about his single run. They tried to at least a couple times, but I don't feel like they ever wanted him to be the singles guy. They were like, can we get Jeff and Matt back together? Like, it always felt like that. Right. What was your impression of Shelton Benjamin and Matt Hardy around, I guess, this time or really in general? Well, Shelton Benjamin, first of all, is one of the most amazing athletes there is. And it's sad that, you know, they couldn't figure out well, they didn't know how to utilize him with the Hurt Business. Yes. But we, but we only got that during the pandemic. We never got that in a, in a live crowd. So it's unfortunate because he was amazing in the Hurt Business. He's an amazing athlete. So it's just one of those things is like they didn't, they had the right person but didn't know how to utilize them. And it's unfortunate. And it happens to a lot of people. Like athletic, you know, May not be the best at promos, but it could be worked on. But they didn't know how to utilize them. Uh, Matt Hardy, again, another one where, yes, he belongs with Jeff, but he wasn't really himself until he came broken, yeah. broken Matt Hardy. So that's when he was able to. The thing is, you got to let these wrestlers just go. Let them do what they want to do, and they will flourish at it. <laughs> like, if you try to create a character for them, it doesn't work out. Like, it's been proven time and time again. It does not work out. Like, Roman Reigns, he tried to make him the big dog. Blue eye contact. Did not work out. <laughs> Tribal Chief, though, did work out. <laughs> so, I, I, like I said, I'm glad the Vince days, McMahon days are over. These characters can now just do what they want to do, and it works out for them. <laughs> I know. It is so weird now that you can easily, I feel the same way, pull the Vince card out and just mm-hmm. be like, the reason this is bad because of Vince McMahon. 
Yeah. And it's true. Like so yeah. many things just didn't feel right. Like certain things obviously felt right. You know, you have Edge mm -hmm. and La Familia, you have Triple H, but mm -hmm. he's just on a lot too. You have, mm -hmm. you know, Batista, you have John Cena. There's a lot of hands mm -hmm. that Vince McMahon, when he, he uses magic touch, things mm -hmm. worked out. But I would say if we probably go through a list of like a hundred people, mm -hmm. which ones turned out great, which ones <clears> turned <throat> out bad, I'm going to take a wild guess. Bad outweighs the good. It just so happens the good was so good that John Cena, Batista, Shawn Michaels, and Bret Hart, they had skills <laughs> already, but with Vince in charge of them, he put the rocket ship and allowing them to flourish versus Shelton Benjamin, who Vince was like, eh, let's talk. Remember that weird storyline where he was looking around like this? Yeah. I'm like, what are you doing? I mean, Why? I mean you got to remember, John Cena didn't start off great either. It wasn't until <laughs> ergonomics. John Cena came about that they were like, okay. And it wasn't until I think Stephanie McMahon really vouched for John Cena. So, they were, you know. <laughs> True. All right. You know what? I, you're right. Vince did ruin everything. I agree. That's, just, that's what this podcast should be called. It was, it was Stephanie McMahon that vouched for John Cena that we got thugonomics and he was able to do his raps. And then he became, you know, the, the John Cena that we have now. <laughs> So. We'll travel back in time. I remember watching on MTV. It was a reality special about becoming a wrestler, and John mm -hmm. Cena was on it, but he was called the prototype. His whole thing, he was like a robot. Mm -hmm. be like, mm -hmm. that, yeah. was, that was how John Cena started. He mm -hmm. was pretending to be a robot. <laughs> Another story, Cody Rhodes. He became Stardust, and he was stuck in there. <laughs> he could not get out of it. And it, mm -hmm. it wasn't until he left and came back that we got the American Nightmare. But poor Cody Rose was stuck at Stardust. <laughs> I mean, he was always going to be Stardust as long as Vince McMahon wasn't in charge. <sighs> wow. So it's just one of the things, like, you know, I'll give Vince credit. He created the wrestling business that we have now. But he also killed a lot of the wrestling business that, you know, we, we got. So there's, there's pros and cons. The cons outweigh the pros. But, like, you know, it's, you know, it's changing for the better. And then, right. Like people used to say Vince was like the Walt Disney of wrestling, but I don't mm -hmm. think so because Walt Disney had, no. a lot of, had so many more hits than mm -hmm. than failures. Vince just I don't know. You ran on the Hulk Hogan era for a while, so that mm -hmm. sold out everything. After that, business went to shit when steroid trial hit the way mm -hmm. like Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels held down the fort. Mm -hmm. You got lucky finding wrestlers like The Rock and terrorizing mm -hmm. Triple H. Steve Austin is mm -hmm. the is the ringmaster, mankind. Mm -hmm. And these were all former WCW wrestlers, except for The Rock. And mm -hmm. so Dustin Rhodes, Goldust, like you just kept finding talent somewhere to fill in the gaps. So mm -hmm. it happened that these people you had fill in the gaps were naturally good at their jobs. Mm -hmm. They weren't mm -hmm. the normal, oh, I'm going to beat you up because I'm really big on steroids. Mm -hmm. These were just good characters and, and mm -hmm. they told good stories, and especially during the new generation era, mm -hmm. really good stuff there. We continue on though. ECW championship Mark Henry defeated Tommy Dreamer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the ECW nobody wants to talk about. Mark Henry had Tony Atlas as his manager, who would ha, 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 laugh like that. And mm -hmm. Tommy Dreamer lost the match because a wrestler named Colin Delaney, who was a protege of Tommy Dreamer, turns on Tommy, allowing mm -hmm. Mark to pick up the win. I don't feel like Mark Henry needs help to win matches, but mm -hmm. apparently they wanted to have a storyline. If you've seen Colin Delaney now, he's big and jacked. If you look at him here, he's small and scrawny. Mm -hmm. So times have changed for him as well. Mm -hmm. And the women, though, the women's singles match for the inaugural. That's right. The inaugural WWE Divas Championship. Michelle McCool picks up the win against Natalia by mm -hmm. submission. Now let's bring that up. How do you feel? Are you a, are you a butterfly wing uh, fan or do you like the women's championship? No, I like the women's championship. I don't like the. I, I didn't like the butterfly. I thought it was. It's. It was just ugh, too gaudy. Like mm. it was. Just, I don't. I didn't like, care for it. I didn't care for the deep, deep title. Uh, but you know, Michelle McCool, amazing wrestler. Natty is. You know that that Natty doesn't get as much credit as she deserves. Like, and people tell tell the same story over and over again. How much Natty helps behind the scenes and in her training. I, I wish I'm happy to hear that she resigned. I, for a while, I thought she, I thought she was gonna leave. I thought she was like, ah, they're not really utilizing me. But you know, Natty, you know, some people love her, some people hate her. You know? <laughs> I hated I hated Total Divas Natty, but I love <laughs> the wrestler Natty. 
Yeah. Total Divas was an interesting uh, experiment oh. for a lot of people. Very, very. I know a lot of people would be like, I don't watch wrestling, but I watch Total Divas. Or like they never they never heard of the Bella Twins, but they knew the Bella Twins from Total Divas, yeah. not from wrestling. So I guess that show did bring in, in a new audience, it which did. It created did. it. But it, like in today's world, I know Chelsea Green and other wrestlers are very positive speaking about the Divas yeah. Championship and the Divas Arrow because they like the idea of being beautiful and tough and mm -hmm. sexy. And be mm -hmm. able to use sexual. You, they didn't mind. I can't. Apparently, uh, maybe mm -hmm. they did a little bit being sexualized because mm -hmm. they thought it's okay to be sexy. Show off your body. I mean, other wrestlers mm -hmm. like women were like, "No, that's not the way we can do things. We're here just to have good matches and also look, you know, good, but not use our sex appeal to sell the match. Our match is going to be based on moves and stories. Mm -hmm. So, you know, two food for thought there. But I think the inaugural Divas Championship is interesting because. In today's world, people either love that championship or fucking hate that championship. Mm -hmm. And hey, I had sold a lot of merchandise. A lot of mm -hmm. kids bought that shit and a lot of people mm -hmm. bought it. So it worked out just like the Spinner John Cena championship mm -hmm. it sold and made a lot of money. I don't have that one championship belt. No, I have um, metal ones. People have given to me. I've never bought one. Mm -hmm. I have a blue. Like when Steve Austin won the belt mm -hmm. in 98 and he got a new belt the next night on Raw, I have that. Mm -hmm. And I have the Intercontinental Championship from that era as well. The Rock had it for a while and X-Pac mm -hmm. and uh, Triple H. We actually mm -hmm. talked about it. Uh, SummerSlam 98, that championship they pulled down between Rock and Triple H. Mm -hmm. I have that one. So on this show, we also talk about bathroom break matches. Which match would you be visiting the toiletries for? Mark Henry versus RVD. It wouldn't be a match for me. I'd be like, I, I gotta go. I'm okay with skipping it. <laughs> yeah, definitely the Mark Henry and Tommy Dreamer match. I would be like, oh, I think. Oh, it's... Sorry, Tommy Dreamer. You said RVD, and I was like, I meant Tommy Dreamer. Was he here? I see no, I sorry, that. sorry. <laughs> no, I, I definitely think that in today's world, I definitely skip that. But unfortunately, if it was 2008 and it was 2008, me, I would skip the women's match because at the time you only have, you only have four minutes. You're not you. You would be. <laughs> Entrances, <laughs> video yeah. packages. Yeah, uh, I'll, be, I'll be running for the bathroom, and unfortunately, in 2008, everyone would be running to the bathroom for the women's match yeah. because they were not presented in a way that we should be having two championships. They were not yeah. presented in a way that people were like, "Yay, women's match!" No, no, yeah. it, and it was always jammed between two main event men matches, which we were like, yeah. "What are you? How can we ever get anything going if you're always jamming in our women's matches between mm -hmm. two main events?" And clearly, the time was always cut. But yeah, yeah I, 2008, I'd have to skip the women. Uh, in 2024, as we record this, Mark Henry, Tommy Dreamer. This was ECW should have been burned to the ground and never brought back. Mm -hmm. So all I got to say is uh, it was a fun pay-per-view. A lot of history around it, though, more so than the actual event. You know, again, JR being drafted, CM Punk cashing in, the PG mm -hmm. ever starting, blood being canceled, mm -hmm. JBL is poopy. Like there, <laughs> There's it's a lot of history here. So uh, would you give this recommendation? Thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs in the middle? Um, I would give it thumbs up. I would give thumbs it a up. thumbs up. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to go like like a thumbs up, but like not always sideways. I'm going to give like a B. I'm going to give it a B because two non-finishes. One of your matches, your main event is not – half of it is not even in front of the crowd. But I love CM Punk as champion. So I'm, I'm all about this pay-per-view in general. But yeah, no, uh, 2008, Great American Bash, good stuff all around. Mm -hmm. Half a thumb, though, half a thumb. But thanks for watching, folks, here on 10 Count Media. I'm Steve Fall. She's Danielle. Have a wonderful day, and we'll see you next time.